Today we're going to learn about odonata. And odonata are a specific type of insect. And all insects are placed in the kingdom Animalia and the phylum Arthropoda, class Insecta, and then placed in a different order based on their physical characteristics. Looking at these, you'll see that they have, all have a, a head, thorax, and an abdomen. But there are two of these insects that are placed in the order Ordinata. And today that's what we're going to learn about. And when you're finished, you're going to easily be able to tell what an Ordinata is and be able to identify maybe three families, right? Three families of, of Ordinata. Let's take a, a closer look at these insects. I want you to look at the insect in the upper right hand corner right here. This is a great example of a dragonfly. If you take a look at the Odonata, they have their, their wings are generally going to be transparent. They can be colorful as well. And they also have a, a lot of, of veins running through their wings. Now, if you were to look at the Odonata and then compare it to the mantid, Mantodia, it also has a lot of veins running through it, but notice that it has raptorial front legs. It has those grasping types of legs, and you don't see that in Odonata. Also, the eyes are much bigger in Odonata in the dragonflies than they are in any of these insects that are here, even though some of them are sizable. Let's take a closer look. If you compare these two, this one, the, the dragonfly, to the damselfly, both in the order... Odonata, the dragonfly always has its wings outstretched. And so it's like an airplane. So if it lands on, say, some cattails or another uh, shrub or a blade of grass, it will always have its wings outstretched. If you look at the damselfly, it will not have its wings outstretched at rest. Instead, they'll be over the top of the of the abdomen. So you can see that here over the top of the abdomen. You also notice that uh, the eyes are not as large, but they both are extremely efficient predators. They, they catch and eat, you know, mosquitoes, other little small flying insects as adults like this. But as juveniles, they're larvae. And so these are aquatic insects in that part of their life cycle is spent in water. And the larvae capture, you know, um, anything that can basically grab a hold of, whether it's, you know, another larva of another insect or um, one of their own species, and even fish they'll grab, and uh, tadpoles. So they are really good effective predators wherever they're going to be. Okay, let's look at these three insects right here. The first thing you notice is their wings are outstretched, that the wings are translucent or see-through. You also see a lot of venation in all three of these insects. But if you take a look at one of them, it's different than the other two, isn't it? It has long antennae. So even though it shares some commonality, it has different characteristics. It also has a very large sickle-like um, mandibles. This is a Dobson flies in a completely different order, a different group. Hello, now we're gonna take a look at three very common Odonata or dragonfly families. We have the Lepelulidae, the Eschnidae, and the Gomphidae. These three families are easily distinguishable by following through with uh, three very simple white questions. So here they are. Number one, you ask yourself if the eyes touch dorsally. What I mean by that is do the eyes touch on top of their heads? Do they come together and touch each other? And it turns out this one here the eyes do touch together on top of the head. Here, they also touch on top of the head. And this one here, and I'll, I'll move this so you can see it a little better, but this one here, the eyes do not touch. There is actually a gap 
a space so the eyes do not touch on top. And if they don't, it's very easily identifiable that you have a, a gum fit. In identifying this specific uh, family of dragonfly is you're first going to look at the eyes. And you're going to ask yourself again, do the eyes touch on top? But you can see that the eyes do touch on top. That means it's not a gonfidae. If they didn't touch, then that would be a gonfidae. Now, if you take a look at their second pair of wings, the first pair is closer to the head. That's in front, right? We call that anterior. And the second pair is behind that, more posterior, behind it. And if you look there, you're going to see that the family Lebelulidae has what's called a boot vein. And a boot vein just looks like, like a stocking. So the vein... Uh, it kind of um, is like tracing a little uh, stocking in the shape of an L for Lebelulidae. And the Eshnidae, the one on the left, does not have a boot vein. Now from left to right, we have an insect that has its eyes touching on top dorsally. And if we look at the second pair of wings, there is no boot vein. It's more like a sickle-shaped, actually. So that would be the family Eshnidae. The insect in the middle, it has a boot vein on its second pair of wings. Eyes do touch dorsally. It has a boot vein on the second pair of wings. It's kind of like in the shape of an L, right? The little boot. So therefore, it is Lebelulidae. The insect on the right, on the far right, its eyes do not touch on top dorsally. Therefore, it is a Gomphidae. So these are the three, these are three very common uh, Odonata families that um, we find in our area. We collect these all the time. They're very beautiful insects, very important part of the ecology for uh, being the predator that it is and controlling different uh, fly populations. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, please, we'd appreciate a like and a share and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Okay, talk to you later. This is Mr. G out.